Greetings fellow Zedites, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Zed City. Episode 19, Deployed Scavs. Update to the changelog. So Zombie Land threat scale has increased again by 25, up to 175, and the contamin contamination scale has increased from 150 to 175. And then I also changed uh, Real Ruin's hostile units amount to zero. Because uh, if you recall, there was like foxes fighting wolves and foxes everywhere and just there was constantly foxes. Some of that is because I don't have any hostile factions. And as a result, it just like spawns foxes in as a placeholder for hostile units. So if you want to turn that off, I can show you where that is. If you go to the real ruins and the mod options here and you scroll down, uh, you have the hostile units amount, which is how many hostiles are present on the map tile. The thing is with Zombie Land, zombies arrive within 24 hours of arriving, so there is the looming threat of hostilities. I don't really need foxes wandering around the map that doesn't add to the action. So let's get started. Now what I'm hoping to do is to smelt a whole bunch of this slag so that we can get the mule built. For you early birds, I am going to kick off a raffle for the name of the mule. So we've got the raffle timer running above my head. Now, some of the other longer term goals is we are currently in the process of reaching, researching geothermal power. Uh, we have a geyser here and a geyser here and geysers would significantly stabilize our power grid. We've had a lot of brownouts because renewable power is subject to fog, which reduces wind or eclipses. Currently we're in volcanic winter, so that hurts uh, solar power as well. So we're heading to geothermal power. The issue with that, of course, is that geothermal power requires a lot of components and requires a lot of steel. So it requires a lot of res uh, resource finding. Hence the mule truck we are building. Uh, the other thing is we do not have the capacity outside of amputations to actually deal with bites. So another project of ours is going to be to either find industrial medicine or alternatively find nutramine because nutramine can be used to change herbal medicine into industrial medicine. And that will allow us to tend bites so that they aren't guaranteed fatal and turning us into zombies. Lore-wise, why can't Thrumbo wander in? Um, because this isn't a world with Thrumbo, or Alpha Beavers for that matter. Yes. It's a world full of zombies and ruins, and uh, I figure Alpha Beavers and Thrumbo are kind of magical creatures, so they didn't really belong. In fact, it took a lot of the magical stuff out like psychic drones and psychic soothes. Although the physical droner and soother items still exist, those items are uh, sort of fantastically difficult to remove from RimWorld, uh, which is why there's so few medieval mods that work well, because RimWorld was not designed to restrict on uh, tech levels all that effectively, as anyone that has tried to run like medieval or... Uh, or non-magical or magical only or non-spacer type runs probably knows. Cherry Picker uh, can remove some of those, but with real ruins, uh, it won't work because the things that spawn in real ruins isn't driven by other mods. Um, ultimately, real ruins really ruins uh, continuity of series. So... I don't make an effort to uh, to try to control what Real Ruins does and does not do. All right, so we do have a threat uh, peak in about 65-ish in about a day. And we did have that tanky zombie that I spawned. Uh, oh, it's stuck. Yeah, I did mark this down as like something that needs to get fixed, I think. Where is, okay, so we have an albino here. Where is the tank? Is the tank in this crowd? I hear... Oh, no, it's it's still bashing pointless walls up there. Okay, got it. So we have an albino coming in, and uh, 
I'm going to have Stormguard and Redfield start to clear them out. So much work goes into the planning of these series. Uh, yeah. Well, not only that, but like... There's a lot of playtesting and balance and concept type stuff that goes in as well. I try to have it be... Uh, to maintain some sort of like continuity. Which is difficult because RimWorld is pretty flexible but not all that easy to manipulate uh, like game systems and the like. All right, the albino, where did it? Oh yeah, here it is. There, all right, albino's dead. Um, I am not spotting any other specials other than that tanky, and that tanky's pretty far away, so it doesn't pose an immediate threat. The raffles for the mule that is um, almost fully built. And that timer is up in 10 seconds, so good luck. Another thing that we probably need to do pretty soon is to do some additional hunting, as we're fairly low on meat. We have kind of a ridiculous amount of vegetables. Um, one thing that we can do for the vegetables is just, like, stop sowing the stuff in here. Although, I'm going to keep sowing it because we can always turn the corn into chem fuel. Chem corn. Okay, uh, my raffle timer alerts aren't working, but let's roll it. Pooker, you are now the lovely new owner of a mule truck. If you want to rename yourself, uh, just use the channel point redemption of uh, character details. And the first poll of the stream is going to be this. Uh, what ruin to head to? So we have north, east, or closest. And I'll explain those choices. So the north ruin here is a pristine ruin that we have spotted. Its wealth is low. Its raider presence is none. Uh, east is wealth is low. Raider presence is low. Uh, raiders won't be present, though. Or they shouldn't be, because I turned those sliders off. Or the closest ruins, which would maybe be this factory because these tents are probably pretty worthless. Or maybe this warehouse. So we'll have you guys vote on that for two and a half minutes. And as soon as my shooters are done... All right, looks like Redfield, you need a meal. Let's get you out of there. Oh, and you're taking off your pants. Make some extra pants. He's like, all right. My work day is over. Pants off. I know how that feels, dude. Chat, you don't even know if I wear pants, do you? You don't even know. I, I mean, I do. But I wouldn't necessarily have to, would I now? Kilgore, thank you for the resub. Steel Boot as well. Cowley. Jetic. Uh, Sildan. Bryzit with bits. GMT the resub. Thank you all. Zero pants stream when? Hey, I mean, hey, I might already be zero pants. You don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, so Mule, you're going to be the... I'm just going to call you Pooker. I'm going to drop the, uh, the, uh, the numbers unless you want them in. So the advantage of the truck over the van. The van uh, can have up to six people, so it's a significantly better vehicle to save people in because... If you send like a driver and someone in shotgun in the truck, there's literally no room for anyone else. They can't be in the bed of the truck. That's just the way it works. Uh, but the truck has about six, uh, four times the carry capacity that um, the van does. Of course, we can also send both, but um, there's some reasons. You'll, you'll understand. I, I won't explain it. It will be obvious to you as to why sending both isn't necessarily the most efficient option.
So we have the mule. Uh, we have a high peak threat event in about one day. And then once that high peak threat event is done, we can venture out. Can the truck pass the van? Uh, likely it can, but I'm going to move the van anyway. And open up all the gates. Oh, good. Oh, Lord. Zeusin, Zeusin. Don't, okay. I was really worried about Redfield's leg coming off. Because that can happen. And, uh, yeah, they, they, they beat each other. Um... The real problem here... Well, I guess Fingface... You shouldn't, Doctor, because you have dementia, but, like, all the other doctors just got beat up. That's not good to have infighting. What is their relationship? Let's see. Redfield... Oh, they're still friends. So there was some sort of slight, let's see. Zeusin called Red, uh, Redfield's aunt a crane. Redfield then started the fight and lost considerably because he's way more beaten. All right. Uh, looks to me like we are going to the closest ruin. Uh, so do you guys want the factory or the warehouse? And there, one last poll. There's still a day left before we depart. There's no rush necessarily on that. What is that tanky up? He is like bugged out and just in his little angry corner. It sounds like he's breaking something, but he's not moving anywhere. So he essentially poses no threat as he is not going towards us, I guess. It's very confusing. And I'm going to allow Guero to grind up the remainder of our steel into components. Um, because components take labor, steel does not. And then Guero, how about you hop in as driver and move the van? The other thing I was thinking of doing is for the base zone to copy it and call this uh, base with garage and base without garage. And the reason for this is the base without garage will be when there is a car outgoing. And it's not safe to be in this section because this door is left open. And that way I don't have to remove it from zone constantly. So let's park there. I don't know if that's the best solution. Whoa, don't squeal the tires, man. Or do. Okay. There's no cargo in Blue Punk. There's no cargo in Pooker. Okay, good. We do have um, zombies congregating, so I'm going to have storm guards start to clear them out. Do we have enough spare chem fuel? So we have 104 spare chem fuel, you can see up here. Uh, at some point, we might want to make a biofuel reactor, but there's also a possibility of finding chem fuel out on the road. And we do have enough chem fuel for now. So the other major factor is that Redfield was probably the person I was going to send out on a um, a sort of scavenging mission, and he is a little injured. Uh, the other thing I might want to do is... So I, I, I might send Stormguard and Guero instead. So I will make a double bed roll for them, uh, because it's possible that we'll spend a night out on the road. Making sure that nothing dangerous is coming our way. Hey, Fangface, uh, I'm going to have you join Stormcrack.
You like this little, uh, dock? I do too. It's the perfect dock to clean zombies from the map. Oh, okay. Well, you know how I was saying that we need to do hunting? The horses are coming to us. So we are going to get plenty of horse meat, whether we want it or not. Is the tanky still... Yep, tanky is still broken. I'll mark him for later. You should be on attack. There we go. Food delivery, yeah, exactly. So we have a Slimer coming down, but that's not much of an issue. Hey, Madsy and Sean, thank you for the resub. How am I feeling? Ah, okay. I've, I've been better, but I've been worse. All right, Redfield is going to go back to work. Uh, are, is the horse attacking a zombie or... No? No. I don't know what it's doing. It's standing here, like, eating a zombie corpse or something? I'm not sure. Just horse things. I don't pretend to understand. Fame face shows up and hits on the married Zeusin. Yeah, I mean, everyone's married. That's actually one of the weird things about RimWorld is like, there is sort of no appreciation for the people that are already in monogamous relationships. There's not a lot of like relationship complexity in RimWorld, in other words. So you have pretty regularly like pawns hitting on pawns that don't even make sense. So if you have like a gay pawn, they're gonna get hit on by straight opposite sex people constantly, which doesn't really happen IRL more than once. If it does, you're a jerk. Like if you have to be told, hey, I'm uh, I'm gay, I'm not interested, multiple times. Uh, yeah, probably, probably would be a pariah of a zombie colony pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, are you sure? Yeah, pretty sure, exactly. So there's a lot of things, I mean, there's obviously mods that handle that. There's a lot of relationship-based mods that um, significantly improve relationship mechanics for that exact expressed reason, I suppose. And there's actually some bugs in the relationship code too, so. Not all of those is fully intentional. Is there a mod that allows for zombie animals? Um, so I'm playing the Zombie Land mod, but there is a different zombie mod that adds zombie animals that I've played with in the past. Zombieified. Hey, Mass. Thank you for the resub. And welcome. All right, good, good work. Uh, we still have a horse that looks. Are these the horsemen of the apocalypse? Well, I guess they're not horsemen because uh, there's no one riding them. Well, that was that was some good good slaying. Unfortunately, it was kind of pointless slaying because we are about to have threat peak, which means um, all the zombies we killed are just being replaced by other zombies that are intruding upon the map. But I'm gonna quickly have uh, Stormguard. Oh, and a zombie attack, which usually is coupled with special zombies. And yes, yes, they are. So that's fun. I'm just having Stormguard here try to clean up all of the horses that we had uh, we had called. All right, so now there we go. Eat your meal, and we will clean up all the stuff. We're gonna have lots of horse meat, which is good. The other thing that we might want to do is to get packaged survival meals, uh, because while we in the winter it was kind of okay going out because our food wasn't spoiling, but now. 
temperature is starting to heat up, which means uh, we're usually not going to be out for too long. So maybe it's not too much of an issue, but it does help to have um, pack your survival meals so that uh, so that, you know, they don't necessarily spoil. All right, I'll hide that pole. Finally, we're going to go to the factory. What is... Oh, it's a war eating a zombie. I love when... Um, so I think it's a bug, realistically. But the carnivorous man-hunting animals will often try to eat zombies for nutrition. But zombie corpses don't have nutritional value. So what they're doing is they're murdering the zombies for me. And then just, like, leaving their corpses. Um, I think it's just uh, a, a bug. But it's a bug I love. Because that zombie just killed a... Or that warg, rather, just killed a uh, uh, a toxic zombie. Yeah, sorry. Thank you for the bits. Empty calories, exactly. It's ju it's junk food, and you can actually see the L look at his body count, man. He started up here. He was like, "I'm hungry. I'm gonna kill one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Man, he has more kills than Guero and Fangface. Maybe not Fangface now. Fangface just racked some up." Yeah, that warg is sporting a kill count. In fact, I could just, like, records. You've killed 17 zombies, dude. Oh, we are no longer in Volcanic Winter. Stellar. That's awesome. And Guero, having been cutting slate blocks, was like, you know what? I, else I could cut humans. I could cut into humans. I'm inspired to cut humans. Oh, there he's just off on his little spree again. So the zombies I have to worry about in this grouping, there's a Slimer, but that's it. That's not so bad. These horses are refrigerated, so they spoil in about four days. There should be plenty of time to haul them where they need to be. And we are heading into a zero threat, uh, an extended zero threat. So I'm going to send Stormgarden Redfield out. Uh, I'm going to have Redfield do a little recreation, maybe, because I'm a little worried about his morale, because he's wounded and injured, and that kind of pisses him off. But I'm going to have Stormguard start to clear as many zombies as we can so that we are free to uh, to go to the factory that you guys voted on. And I'll probably bring maybe Stormguard and Fangface on this run. Although, Fangface, what is your move speed? Mm, no. Maybe Guero. I'll bring them as a couple. I mean, I did make a uh, a double bed row, so Stormguard and Guero will go. So if your changelog, when you click on the changelog image, if it is not updated, it's likely due to caching. But uh, the changes indicated in the change log have taken effect. As you can see, the threat skill and intensity has gone up. But thanks to browser image caching to try to save bandwidth, uh, it doesn't necessarily always update. Ooh, a party. Um, how to get you guys to attend the party? I'm going to have them briefly ignore targets. Although, that is a lot of targets to walk away from. I'm slightly worried that I have to call off this party because yes, that is way too many targets to just be like, all right, time to ignore them. I would have I would have liked to attend this party, but I don't think I could afford it. In fact, I'm gonna conscript everybody to start clearing these boards out. Another thing I wanted to do is to, on these shelves, have it so that they don't bother stockpiling anything tattered on the, the stockpile shelves. 
so that we don't grab like random garbage items that are we aren't gonna wear. In fact, I'm gonna move that slider up to like, let's say 66%. Um, Cause zombie clothing usually is pretty ruined, but not always tattered. Oh, we shot the, the ward. You'd feel safer with a double outer wall? Well, we, once I go on this scavenging run, can vote on stuff like that. And Belgerian, thank you for the bits, and cheers. So do freezers in overhead mountains function better? Only when they have exhausts, but otherwise, yes, they do. Uh, the things, the, the best way to have highly functional freezers is you want double insulated walls, uh, only corners matter, or corners don't matter, matter. And overhead mountain roofs are also very effective as well. But given that this map tile doesn't get particularly hot, uh, super efficient isn't a big deal. All right. Redfield's about to have a cow, so I'm going to have him be excused. No, leave. All the others finish off the remainder zombies. A little worried about friendly fire here, because they weren't grouped up. Oh god, let's not have the demented person be firing bullets past Guero. We don't need two brain damages. The number of zombies to go over a wall is 18, yeah. 18 is the default, and unless indicated either on the changelog or the details, Everything else is left default. So all of the mod settings, all the mod, uh, yeah, all the mod settings are in the um, the collection, the mod collection on Steam. Nice. The entirety of this wall now can be uh, granite all the way to the deep water, which is super, super functional. Ideally, we would want a wall that comes like straight down like this. So that there's no hiding in this corner here. Uh, but that can happen once the, um, the moisture pump expands to its maximum. Because once it's expanding to its maximum, all of these tiles will be... Uh, thick wall buildable. So patience will make it better. Oh, and the double walls come in handy because look at that. We have a shot breach where we literally shot the wall until we broke a hole into it. Good job, inaccurate shooters. All right, we have 113 zombies still on the map tile, so it's not exactly a safe scenario to go leaving. Um, I think tomorrow morning I will make a very good faith effort to remove as many zombies as I can so that we can uh, go to the ruins. Actually, let's not do that yet. Squirrel's making some repairs from all the gunfire. It also happens to be pissing off zombies on the other side of the wall. Aren't they all master shooters now? Uh, Zeusin and Fangface wouldn't be. Oh no, Zeusin is. Fangface wouldn't be. As he's recent recruit. Oh yeah, here comes the, uh, the horde. 
Okay. Redfield, you're in a pretty good mood. Let's get you to clear. Stormguard. You need a little bit of recreation, but you know what? You just got married, so happy honeymoon. You get to shoot too. And then Zeusin, uh, same goes for you. We're going to pause the research that you normally do to get shooting the zombies. Kilgore, thank you for the gifted subs. I'll drink to that. Cheers. So the tanky up is still up there, and I'm probably going to want to kill him sooner or later before he, like, accidentally dislodges. But, um... First, I want to kill the zombies in this corridor. The other thing is I was thinking, uh, adding a garage door here so that we can enter the the garage compound with gun um, cover. That was actually a YouTube comment, and I really liked that comment. Yes, you want my brains? Come get them. Nothing like fast forward fire here. Probably ultimately not that safe. A lot of room for mistakes. Okay, we have 64 zombies, but like none of them are necessarily blocking the way. So, next order of business is to move Pooker uh, into the garage bay so that we can deploy. Uh, you have a new monitor and now I'm huge? Oh, I've always been huge. Uh, Fangface, what are you doing? He has no path. Okay, ignore your... Oh my god, what are you doing? Bugs abound. That's all I'm going to say to that. Alright, Guero. Let's get you to move the truck. And then... Flip-flop this door with this one. And the idea that I have for once we're a little bit wealthier is to put turrets in here so that the vehicle bay is covered by turrets that I can turn on or off when needed. But now this truck, because it has a valid path uh, all the way out to the outside, can be used for caravanning. Despite uh, Tynan's overhaul of the caravan mechanics that were, like, pretty critical, um, eh, they're still not perfect. So, vehicle caravan of Pooker. Stormguard and Guero are going to go. Done. We're going to bring some fine meals. Probably don't need more than ten, I'd imagine. Uh, we will bring the double bedroll and chem fuel. Where I don't see him feel. Huh. I wonder why I didn't see it. Load cargo, chem fuel, and let's load 80. Oh, you know what it was? Uh, because of the short drive that we did with Pooker, its fuel probably dipped below 100%. And as a result, uh, it the chem fuel was being used. Yeah, it was being used by Fangface for refueling. Um, and therefore, the item itself was being used up. Uh, okay, so we don't have all the chem fuel loaded in that I wanted to load in, but we have enough spare chem fuel that we should be able to get home. Oh, actually, no, we, we're fine. Nice.
Oh, some hot shot driving there. And everybody is going to be on base without garage. Because it's no longer safe to go up there. Nemeliosis, thank you for, uh, thank you for the resub. So we're going to enter the factory. And try to either get things for zombie serum medicine or, you know, building material steel, etc. I'm also going to add a, well, so we have a smelt apparel of, I'm going to do a smelt apparel of um, any tainted apparel. So I'm going to rename this smelt tainted apparel. And then I'm going to do a smelt apparel of tattered. So anything tainted and tattered will just got get automatically smelted. And I'm going to do the ingredient radius smaller. Uh, so that we don't run all over the map and grab stupid apparel that doesn't make sense. So tattered and tainted. And then destroy apparel. And this is going to be tattered apparel. We do not need to be filling our shelves with garbage. So then any apparel that is not smeltable, because they go into order, right? Top down. So any any apparel that isn't smeltable for tainted or tattered means that it is unsmeltable. So uh, tattered apparel and tainted apparel. Let's destroy. Although we shouldn't have tainted apparel because tainted apparel kind of means... It's came off a dead human because zombie apparel isn't tainted. Although I'd argue that it probably should be. Uh, destroy tainted apparel and there is the new queue. And this should clean up some of the uh, the nonsense in this stockpile that is uh, items we don't want. So there's still 64 zombies on the map tile, but none of those 64 zombies really pose a significant threat to the security of home at the moment, which is why I have freedom of movement. The other thing I could do with Fangface is have him, because, you know, one caravan is obviously not enough to maintain. I'll probably only do this once, because um, I don't want to manage a... I don't want to manage my survivors that are out on another map tile and fang face caravanning slag but i'll do one run of slag because there's no zombies down here that pose a threat to our survivors hauling slag in the southeast corridor Question for you all. Oh, map encounter. Uh, I'm going to keep it paused when the ruins get generated. So next question is, what should we make with steel next? Moisture pumps, SMG, or a weaponry. Weapons in general uh, would work. Um, components. Save for geothermal, I should say. Or other viewer suggestions. That'd be good to decide. Oh, well, this factory... They were very generous in calling it a factory. It's... not a factory at all um the thing is we can just like refuel and leave i'll see what's in there i mean maybe it's a treasure trove who knows but uh i have a feeling like i just got screwed i feel screwed that's real ruins man i mean you know it's all random choo choo Can you, like, 
shoe. So one of the weirdness of uh, River Ruins is it will spawn, because I don't have a mechanoid hostile faction, it will spawn mechs that aren't really mechs. They just stand there and do nothing. You can think of them as just like automatons or I don't know. Look, cancel the caravan forming. And it... Uh, it has glitter world beds. I mean, you know, that's could be worse. But it certainly was not worth the trip, I would say. So, I'm going to form a uh, caravan of Pooker. We're going to take the Glitter World Meds. And... I'm going to go to the Pristine Ruins to the east. They just said they'd run out of food, but don't you guys have food? You do. Oh, are you dumping your food? Because you think that's smart? Hi. Okay, well that was a bust. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Z City, which originally streamed live on Twitch October 22nd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com or the description of this video have a link to it. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.